This is Frank Islam, Chairman and CEO of FI Investment Group and your host of Washington Current Review, where we interview leading voices from business and politics that impact you, the viewer. Today, our guest is Dr. Masu Mamaya. She's a wonderful woman. She's a curator for the Smithsonian Indian American Heritage Project. She brings a wealth of experience to this wonderful project at Smithsonian. She's a graduate of Harvard and Stanford Universities. Wonderful. Thank you for coming to our show. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure yeah. to be here. Yeah. Now, tell me a little bit about this Smithsonian's Indian American Heritage Project. What is the goal? What's the mission? And what's the vision? Well, the mission of the Smithsonian itself is to preserve our heritage as Americans, um, to create new knowledge, and also share that knowledge with the world. Um, in American history, everyone hasn't necessarily been included. So the goal of the Indian American Heritage Projects and other similar projects is to make history more inclusive. Um, it was founded in 2007 um, jointly by the leadership at the Smithsonian and by Indian American community members around the country. And the goal really is to share the heritage, art, and culture of Indian immigrants and their descendants in the United so States. So you're showing a different face of America. A different face of America, a more inclusive face of America. And those are the strengths and the values of America, the inclusiveness and openness that we can proudly and truly embrace. Definitely, definitely. Um, and I think we're learning as a country. We're learning Good. as a country about the it's diverse peoples that have created and, who and, we and are And we should today. take a pride in our diversity and democracy of this great nation. Yeah, absolutely. That we all love and care deeply. Now. Uh, the main initiative that uh, I want to talk to Conrad Neg uh, not too long ago, who is your boss, as I understand, who happens to be the, as I understand, who happens to be the brother-in-law of the President of the United States, uh, as I understand. Uh, he's a great guy, he's a great guy, wonderful person, and, and he's a committed, he's a passionate, and he wants to take this uh, project to the next level, to the next step. Now, the Indian Hammerhead Project is an upcoming exhibition beyond Bollywood. What a wonderful way to put it, Indian American Shape the Nation. Where did the title come from and what does it mean? So when we were thinking about the title, we were thinking that we're creating the exhibition both for Indian Americans and also for the general public. So the first question we asked is, what do people come in the door with? What do they already know? And one association is, of course, Bollywood. The films, the music, the vibrancy, I'll the colors, got it. the energy of that. And so we wanted to preserve that as a starting point, but then also take people beyond that to show them the very, very diverse and numerous ways that Indian Americans have shaped this country, both through cultural realms. Art um, and civilization. Yes. And cuisine. And cuisine, but then also in science, in medicine, and no in question business, about that. Um, in farming, in trade. So um, the idea In every really, walks of life. In all walks of life, um, dating all the way back almost to the founding of this country. Now, the founding of this country, you're talking about 230 years ago, that's Indian right. American came to this nation? That's right. So the first documented Indian immigrant to come to this nation was in 1790, which is just a few years uh, after the founding of this nation. It was a man who came as part of the, a ship's crew from Madras um, to the East Coast to Salem, Massachusetts. And um, that person didn't stay for a long time, but what happened is that sort of was the first documented person to come. And then many came after, both to the East Coast mm -hmm. as part of ship's crews, but then also um, from the West Coast to stay, to farm, to work the railroads. So wow. many people think we've oh, only I, been I, here I did since not the know 60s, that. but that's not true. So this is the, during the empire of the Mughals, when um, they sail from the coast of India to the coast of uh, United States. Yeah, right? it was it was during the empire of the British. So people who Well, the came British didn't come in till 1852. They rule they didn't rule till 1852. When was the last uh, Mughal left and went to Rangoon, Burma? Okay. Was the that that I this what I understand. But let me just shift my gear a little bit and to get back to this project we're talking about which is so exciting uh, energizes a lot of people uh, in the audience hopefully they can contribute as well. When and where did the exhibition take place? 
So the exhibition will open about a year from now, next autumn um, of 2018. And, and that will be housed in the Smithsonian? It will be in the Smithsonian in the Museum of Natural History, which is um, the museum that gets the second most traffic behind the Air and Space Museum. So we're hoping that at least seven million people will see it uh, while it's there. It will open um, about a year from now in 2013 and be there until 2015, the beginning of 2015, after which it will be uh, condensed into a smaller version and travel around the country for five years. And we're really hoping that it will go to communities where Indian Americans are. So, that so it'll be go all over, the world, uh, all over the country? All over the country, that's right. It's a larger city. Um, to large cities, but you know, maybe also smaller communities as so well. So we'll tell the story. It's going to tell the story. It will broadcast the story to the world community as well, in addition to the United States. In addition to the United States. I mean, we're hoping to do that through the web and through some of the public programs that we archive. So, I mean, as, as I said earlier, the, mis the mission of the Smithsonian is really to share knowledge with the world. So Good. So what kind of things should we expect to see the exhibition? There will be a number of different kinds of things, um, historical artifacts, works of art, uh, old and new photographs, as well as interactive stations. Um, so let me give you some examples. In terms of historical artifacts, um, the Smithsonian recently acquired the turban of a man named Balbir Singh Sodhi. He was the first man to be shot in a hate crime after 9-11 happened. It was a okay. very significant and sad story. Yes. Um, we'll also be showing some more upbeat artifacts, um, such as Olympic medals that have been won by Indian American athletes. Um, uh, who was that person? Um, there have been several. Alexei, oh, several. Yeah, okay. Alexei Graywall okay. was one. Okay. Uh, Mohini Bhardwaj okay. and Jay Bavsar. Wow, wonderful. I did not know that. That's wonderful to tell the story. Yeah, and hopefully inspiring for, for young people to see as well. And hopefully some stories about the business people, the entrepreneurs. Absolutely. I Th mean, those who have shaped our destiny. As we know, entrepreneurship is a core value in the United States and has made this country what it is in so no many ways. No question about that. Um, and Indians have been a part of that, not just the contemporary entrepreneurs such as yourself, but dating all the way back to the 1900s when they started some of the first farms in it's California. It's the part of their gene, the part of the DNA. <laughs> I and guess And we should so. take a pride in it. Yeah, that's definitely something to be proud of. Uh, how can the Indian American community be involved, engaged in this exciting process, the exciting project that you got? Well, there's so many ways. Um, the first thing is that this project really wouldn't be possible without the contributions of Indian Americans themselves. So, so you don't get money from the Smithsonian or from the government or the Congress for this? Well, um, the contributions come in a couple of forms. Um, so in terms of the actual things that yeah. make up the exhibition, we've been fortunate to have many people that have shared their objects, their stories, their photographs with us. These aren't things that are part of the national collection, and we're hoping that they will be at some point in the future. That was one of the purposes of the project. Um, in terms of funding, uh, the exhibition has been funded so far by money that the Smithsonian itself has put in, as well as generous So that's the seed money you're talking about? From private, yes, from private individuals. The Smithsonian has felt since the beginning of the project that it's a really important, important thing to have. And so they've been generous in sort of contributing um, for five years since 2007. Well, what I, I would be interested to, to, to talk about and let the audience know a little bit about uh, the fact that the, this kind of a project needs a lot of money, not needs a lot of resources, just not the cash, but the people, the human capital, and, and the list goes on and on. So what have you raised so uh, up to date right now, and what are the remaining needs of the program is, and how people can get engaged? Yeah, so thus far we've raised $675,000. Um, how much? $675,000. Which isn't bad. Yeah, I mean, considering that this is a first time yeah, that's endeavor, pretty good. it's not bad. So what are the, if the people do give money, excuse me, what do they get? Not just a plaque and satisfaction. Yeah. What else do they get? <laughs> Well, part of it is being part of history, right? Which okay. is so which you make they're making investments. So, what return the investment they're going to get? Yeah, I mean, I think one is is sharing our history and our culture with the community. I also think that I mean, for me, I I believe that Indians will always be perceived as foreigners and newcomers until it's understood that we've been here for a long time and that we've shaped this nation in a number of ways. And I think the return on that kind of investment is 
is invaluable. Um, we still see hate crimes, we still see discrimination. Just recently in August, we saw a, ma a man go in and commit you know, murders inside a Gurudwara. The perception is on some level. So they're confronting some hostility and open prejudice. Yeah, and a sense that we don't belong here, um, which is not uh, true. Which is, uh, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, uh, they, they share a common fear, in a sense, right? Yeah, and maybe a, a common lack of understanding about. And about so this this will this will tell the story of the wonderful story of the Indian American as an immigrant and, and their contribution and accomplishment that they have done to this nation. Exactly. And they have shaped this nation, as you said. Yes, in in many ways, in the ways that people assume, but and also in the ways that people may not know about. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, as I understand. Uh, uh, that the center would like to see Indian American project to be a permanent part of its program. So are you excited about it? And tell us a little bit uh, yeah. what's going to be, when is it going to be, what it is? Um, I mean, I think it's an amazing platform. I think the Smithsonian itself is an amazing platform. It is the national set of museums, millions of people, not just from the United States. But all over the world. All over the it's world. It's free also. It's absolutely free. And it's, I mean, that makes it fantastic for families, for, you know, multiple generations. You can go and spend a couple of hours. Um, looking at things that interest you. There's also ongoing public programs and there's curriculum for teachers so that they can incorporate the things um, from their exhibition into their classrooms. Um, and having something permanent would be really amazing. It would, it would signify that we, are, we have been here and we're here to stay. Um, and that we see ourselves as a part of American history. So in addition to- And a part of the American dream. And as a part of the American dream, creating it and living it. And that they embody that American success story. Yeah, as do many other immigrants. You very well said. Can you give us uh, some insight into what this project will look like in three to five years? So if I if you come back in about two a couple of years, what will projects look like? Uh, in, in three to five years? Yeah, in three to five years, well, hopefully the exhibition itself will be traveling around the country and we'll be able to um, capture some of what's going on in various communities around the country um, through, for example, archives on the web, through broadcasting public programs. Um, we also hope to expand, I think, our understanding of of India and the Indian diaspora beyond the United States. So it would be lovely to make links with Indian communities in other parts of the world and compare and contrast their experiences, as well as compare and contrast our experiences with other, Im other immigrant groups. Um, so that's something that I think the Smithsonian is committed to telling a broader and more inclusive story. And we obviously need to be part of that. Now explain to me, uh, you say Indian American project. You didn't talk about the South Asian, so it does not encompass the people uh, who has, uh, in a sense, Indian American heritage, which includes the Pakistani, the people from Bangladesh, people from Nepal, Bhutan, mm -hmm. and that part of South Asia. Mm -hmm. So this only is going to concentrate Indian American, not the other part of the nation I just described. Nationalities, yeah. our heritage. Well, it's a really good question. Other history. Yeah, it's a really good question, right? Because as we know, the history of India versus South Asia is very, is very complicated and has changed over time in terms of how the subcontinent was one subcontinent and then divided during partitions. So, I mean, in my estimation as a scholar, it's very hard to tell Indian American history without considering South Asian history more broadly. And we'll see that in different places in the exhibition as people have come from and identified in different ways. Um, I think the Smithsonian, for the sake of um, trying to make a coherent exhibition and something that isn't so large that it's very difficult so to- So you really constant in an American in. part they of that. Did, they did impart a focus on the exhibition. So we're hoping to maintain the focus while also so not erasing kind of the historical accuracy of what South Asia means. Okay. Now, if someone wants to talk with you, get to know more about these projects, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people in the audience will be interested and, and perhaps energized and excited, uh, uh, some of the things that you're doing, uh, t tell us how will they contact you. Tell the audience. Yeah, so the, the best way to find out more information and stay updated is by following our website, which is indianamerican.si.edu. 
Um, we have a blog as part of that website where we post kind of happenings, including things from a lovely object that comes in or a piece of art that we've acquired or interviews like this will be featured on the blog. Um, so that's a great way to stay updated. Our contact information is on that website as well. And we do have Twitter and Facebook feeds for, for also, those that You're also follow. on the Facebook. Can you tell us one That's more right. time, uh, the web page one more time? Yeah, it's indianamerican.si.edu. Indianamerican.si, SI stands for Smithsonian Institute, .edu. That's right. Wonderful. That's right. Why you? You come from Stanford and Harvard. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and um, you know, those are, the, one of the best, those are the two best universities in the United States for, for that matter in the world. What made you to come over here and get engaged with this and involved? With this, pro with this project? Why? Yeah, well, I mean, You as an individual. Me as an and individual. And then I will try to expand that horizon yeah. uh, with other people and how, uh, what made you to do that? Yeah, well. What, what's your story here? I mean, I, I believe in the importance of education. It's you something that I've been committed to my whole life. Um, and as a researcher, I think this is one of the best platforms to be able to bring my skills as a social scientist to be able to create things that educate different audiences. And the Smithsonian itself is a very dynamic institution with a lot of people who are very creative, very smart, um, and use the platform of exhibitions and the accompanying programs uh, very well. So, I mean, in my estimation, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to be able to, to bring the skills um, to such an amazing platform. Well, very well said. And I appreciate you taking the time to come and talk to the audience, talk to the people, talk to me. And this is a noble cause. You're doing the right thing. And, um, and, uh, and you're telling the story of our shared history and heritage. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, Mr. Islam. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate that very much. And good luck to you. Thank you. That is our show. This is Frank Islam from FY Investment Group wishing you a great week.